Hello, my name is Xavri and welcome to the ultimate guide to designing Salesforce Lightning Pages with Salesforce Ben. Now, Lightning Pages in Salesforce not only offer a modern and intuitive user interface, but when paired with dynamic forms, they unlock unprecedented level of customization. You can display or hide individual fields based on user profiles or roles or field attributes on the record. You can tailor entire sections to appear or disappear under specific conditions and criteria. You can present users with buttons, links, uh, flows based on, again, record uh, attributes or user attributes. And you can use conditional logic to dynamically present uh, tabbed sections and many, many more. It's, it's truly powerful capability. And yet, so what is the question many people keep asking. Uh, they're very powerful, but how should we actually leverage them? And it usually comes down to two questions. Where? Which pages or objects should even get the dynamic treatment? And even if you, and even if you identify those, when? What are the rules or conditions for showing or hiding uh, relevant information? Well, in this short video, I want to present you with an approach to help you identify opportunities for leveraging and designing Lightning Dynamic Experience. So this is a fairly simple uh, hierarchical diagram created in UPN notation, the one you're required to ace for your business analysis certification, which describes the business process for uh, re recruiting a new uh, employees into the business and onboarding them. In every business, in every organization, this is likely to look a bit different. And depending on the scale of the organization and the processes or practices you put in place, you might have a need for either a more complex or simpler process. But let's go with this uh, fairly simple example uh, to demonstrate the, the principle. Now, what I've done is uh, I've captured a bit of a life cycle from, from first uh, receiving uh, candidates details, uh, registering those in Salesforce and then going through the, the entire life cycle. Now the key value of UPN notation is the fact that it, it emphasizes capturing of distinct and verifiable outcomes at the end of each activity. If you follow this principle and, and focus on capturing the user experience, you can actually use that to, to capture and document what are the, 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 the data, the fields, the attributes you want captured or filled out at every stage. For instance, you register candidate, uh, and how would we know this was actually done? Because candidate's name, contact details, CV and position they applied for are all put into Salesforce. And then line manager, uh, reviews the application and either rejects the candidate uh, and informs them through email or they go actually that's uh, someone I, I very much am interested in and they shortlist uh, that candidate. Okay, candidate record is shortlisted. Um, we schedule the interviews, let's say for the sake of argument in this case it's only one interview so we set the date and the time. Uh, we capture comments after the interview and again either we reject the candidate or we approve them. So now let's look at how we would potentially break this information down in a much more familiar tabular format. Now for the purpose of this exercise I've decided that I will create only one object which is called staff because uh, the information I would capture for a candidate like their contact uh, uh, details, their address, um, things like that are, well, pretty much the same I, I would have to capture for an employee. And I've decided, because let's say we run a very simple, small organization, that it makes more sense to keep this information in one place. It also makes the security model and control of access to that sensitive information a bit more uh, simpler. So we can see that uh, we have all the activities I've reviewed in the process, uh, different stages that are either explicitly or uh, captured in the diagram or implied from the diagram and I've made the effort to, to specify what data seems to be required at any given point, what actions uh, are necessary but also as we progress with 
the candidate through the life cycle and then the candidate potentially evolves into a hired employee and that employee uh, record in a sense evolves through the uh, life cycle what information may no longer be required as we progress through next stages so now if I go to my very simple uh, demonstration I've got my again very simple uh, staff record for completely made up candidate John Smith and as we said in the process when they're new uh, we need to capture their general details uh, upload their CV okay hence the file section um, and potentially send an email if we uh, if when we review the application and we decide for instance that uh, we want to reject them so I could pick a rejection email template from my screen flow now if I shortlisted the candidate that still stays the same but we shortlisted them for the interview I can now show a section uh, or it could be a related record or something for when the interview is uh, scheduled for and any comments after the fact if I now let's say approved the candidate right things like the salary start date uh, benefits we've agreed on maybe during the negotiation are well now relevant now is something we can we can display now once we hire a candidate that's it we we don't we I don't longer at least as a line manager I no longer have need for their CV I have no longer need for sending them uh, you've passed or we've rejected you uh, emails but now I have some pre-boarding tasks to prepare or maybe an HR manager has and once those are completed uh, we move on to let's say orientation stage and assuming that all the pre-boarding tasks have been done I have no longer need for that information now what I really want to know is how far have we progressed through the basic onboarding and once we've completed all, all the onboarding I can move on to training section and you can see how even with this very simple example very simple object the information we display on the screen is always relevant to where we are uh, in the life cycle of, of, of this particular record so next time you're designing or thinking about leveraging dynamic forms and lightning pages I sincerely recommend uh, using the business analyst principles of mapping out the business processes to actually try to think and analyze the required user experience. Thank you.